Good morning, you guys. I hope you guys are doing good. And welcome to another episode of Tea Time with Lovely Tea Unfiltered. We're about to get into a lot of stuff today. So I want to come on here and talk about how petty the internet has gotten. The internet has gotten so petty, it's ridiculous. Give me a P. Give me a E. Give me a T. T. Y. I'm petty all the time. Yes, that is you, internet. You guys are super petty, and I'm going to go ahead and dissect how we got here, okay? So I want to come on here and talk about cancel culture, but not just talking about it, but I want to talk about the toxicity of cancel culture and how bad it's gotten over the past few years. Now, what encouraged me to do this podcast was basically, if you follow me on YouTube, if you don't know who I am, I'm Lovely TTV on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe. Shameless plug, okay? But yesterday I did a video and it's getting a lot of traction right now on social media. And it's about, you know, the petition that was started to get Wendy Williams fired. And over 26,000 and counting people have signed this petition. They want her removed for the joke that she said about Joaquin. I got his name right, you guys. You got to give me some props. Thanks, tea sippers. So anyways, she was talking about Joaquin Phoenix and suppose he has a cleft palate. Other folks are saying that he was not born with the cleft palate, that it's just a scar. Honey, I don't know. But anyways, one person that was really pissed off about the situation was Cher. And what was so funny is that she was so angry. Even after Wendy Williams apologized, she was so pissed. She refused to take the apology. And to me, the only person who should have been upset is Adam Big Hill, who one, suffers from a cleft palate and whose son also suffers from it. So somebody who's actually having to live with this facial deformity that he was born with and his son is having to deal with the surgeries, if he was able to forgive Wendy Williams and move on, why is Cher so angry? And that's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about the toxicity of cancel culture. And it's not just Wendy Williams. We've seen it happen to a lot of celebrities from Kanye West to Candace Owens to Bill Maher. We've seen it happen to so many people. Taylor Swift, the list goes on, okay? And so... I feel like this whole cancel culture thing really started, it really picked up speed around 2015 when the whole Black Lives Matter movement was going strong. I remember doing video after video of the latest celebrity that was canceled for that week because they kept saying all lives matter. I mean, people canceled Fetty Wap, they canceled J-Lo, they canceled um, Chrisette Michelle, they canceled so many people. It was ridiculous. I said, if y'all keep canceling folks, we're not going to have anybody to damn listen to or watch. Because everybody's canceled, you know, and I feel like the whole cancel culture, it goes towards fake outrage culture. I think it kind of blends into that. And my thing has always been this. While you're busy canceling other people for what you think they did, imagine if God just canceled you for everything that he knew that you did. Okay. And before y'all come out here and say, well, damn, God did cancel Adam and Eve, so he's the one who started cancel culture. No, to me, that was consequence. And that's where the lines have been blurred, okay? Adam and Eve did something wrong, and those were the consequences for their actions. And in this day and age, we're not even dolling out consequences. We'd rather just cancel somebody, throw them away, and keep it moving. And to me, that is so dismissive. That is such a dismissive way of handling things, okay? The main issue with cancel culture to me is that we lose opportunities to educate people, especially in active spaces. You know, it's so easy to sit behind a screen on Twitter and say you're canceled as opposed to trying to educate that person and let them know what they did was wrong. Instead of insulting someone, insulting their looks and trying to shame them, in my personal opinion, we'd be better off taking time to explain to them what they did was wrong, why it was hurtful or problematic and ways for them to to rectify and change the situation. Everything starts with dialogue. And I feel like in this day and age, we've become so lazy, mainly due to social media, mainly due to technology. We live in a microwave society. So it's very easy for me to just type, you're canceled or cancel you or unfollow you or unfriend you as opposed to getting to the root of the matter, as opposed to saying, you know what, let me try and figure out what makes that person tick. If I feel like that person is a racist, what got them to that point? Because nobody's born racist, okay? We go through things in life, we deal with different experiences, and that's what shapes and molds us as a people. So it's so much easier to just cut somebody off because, again, we live in a lazy microwave society than trying to get down to the thick of the matter. 
then trying to get down to what really makes somebody tick. Why are they saying the things that they're saying? How did they come to this conclusion? And I understand for some people, they feel like it's not worth it. I'm not going to reason with terrorists, you know, quote unquote. I'm not going to reason with racist and rapist and all types of stuff like that. You know, so I get that part of it. But I think that a lot of people don't want to reason it's not really because they don't want to because of what they feel like that person exemplifies. They don't want to do it because they're lazy. OK, let's keep it real. Call out culture in this day and age has now become about the person. It's about that person feeling good because now I'm more moral than you. I'm more superior. And even when somebody apologizes, we don't even care. The first thing we say is that apology is bullshit off with their head anyways. You know, so call-out culture has gotten very, very toxic. Like I said, even when Wendy Williams apologized, said she was going to donate money to the Cleft Palate community and to the SMILE program. I forget their name, forgive me. But she was going to donate her money to those programs and, you know, to help bring more awareness and information to Cleft Palate. That still was not good enough for share. You know, so again, that's why I feel like call-out culture is more about the person making the call-out. Think about this point. When T.I. was demanding that the whole black community boycott Gucci. To me, in that moment, it was more about T.I. than the black community. You know, he wanted to do this three-month boycott. He had no plan. He wasn't shouting out any black designers. He wasn't giving people an alternative. Most of the people that he was demanding that they boycott Gucci couldn't afford this shit no damn way. It's very easy for you to cancel something when you don't have it in your closet, when you can't afford a $200 Gucci belt or a $1,000 Gucci purse. Like, let's keep that real. It's very easy to cancel that. But I bet you if it had been like, cancel J.C. Penny and Coles, it had been crickets, okay? Exactly. It had been straight up crickets had it been about J.C. Penny and Coles because why? The average American can afford that. They'd have been like, Tiago, sit your ass down. But because it was a rich brand, it was easy for people to get on the whole call out cancel culture. OK, and I'm not saying that what Gucci did was right. It was definitely wrong. But my issue is this. So we go through all this hoopla. We get all emotional. We cancel Gucci only for the same people who were demanding that Gucci be canceled last year to quietly go back and wear Gucci. A lot of these same celebs who were talking all that mush mouth shit have not been seen spotted wearing this new season's Gucci, okay? So the whole situation to me is just funny and it's just comical. And that's why I feel like call-out culture is more about those people than even the folks that they're calling out. It's all about, you know, that that delicious, mmm, mm, mm, good, like Campbell's soup, that delicious pleasure of righteousness and indignation and feeling superior to somebody else. You fucked up. I see what's underneath your skirt. And I haven't fucked up yet, so I'm good. You feel me? Because I feel like that's what a lot of that comes down to. And I've been on the receiving end of cancel and call out culture. And it doesn't feel good. And especially when it's based off of a fucking lie. Okay? So it does not feel good at all. It's not okay. And I know, you know, it really takes a toll on your mental health. But like I always say, at the end of the day, you just let your integrity speak. I'm not going to wallow in the mud with weirdos and faceless people. I refuse to do that. And I didn't do that. I was like, okay, well, that's your opinion. Move along. And, you know, kept living my best life. And now we're in 2020, honey, making moves. And that part of 2019 literally never happened. So my thing is I've been on both sides of the equation. And it's not fun and it's not okay. I think... While it's good to call out certain behaviors, that's always good because a lot of times if you don't call certain behaviors out, people sometimes are just unaware. You know, what I'm saying that what they're doing or what they're saying is bad. You know, ignorant doesn't make you bad. It just means that you just don't know. OK, and if you don't know, that's OK. And sometimes it takes people to school you. Just like with me, I mispronounce names all the time. That doesn't make me ignorant. I just don't know how to pronounce certain names. I just don't. So when people tell me or they break it down in the comment section, it helps me. And then when I do an updated video or when I talk about the story again, I'd be like, OK, I remember how that person broke down the name for me. So now I know it's not Jaqueen Phoenix. It's Joaquin Phoenix. You know what I'm saying? So that doesn't make me ignorant. It just means I just don't know how to pronounce his name. But people help me with that. You get what I'm saying? So we have to be able to be patient with certain people, especially if it's their first time messing up. Now, if they have a history of problematic behavior, if they're not changing, elevating or growing from their past mistakes, then at that point, I can agree and I can see people canceling somebody. But when it's somebody's first mistake and your whole thing is to just throw them out the window, you know, throw the baby out with the bathwater, 
daughter, that's not okay. And we've gotten to a point in society now where people can't even apologize for their mistakes. And then we have to think about what that type of stuff, when you're canceling people and you're calling them out for the littlest mistakes, what that does to them. Maybe that person who might have said something racist that they that they may have not realized was racist or said something sexist or homophobic that they didn't really realize it. Um, imagine when they get attacked by so many people for something that they said, or, you know, this whole culture of digging up old ass tweets. I mean, it's like, imagine how much time you have to have in your life, how much of a loser you have to be to go through somebody's tweets from 10 years ago. Do you know how long that takes? I remember trying to just find a story when I was talking about Snoop Dogg. Um, and I was trying to find those old um, clips from just a year ago. That shit took me a good hour just to go through my whole feed to find something from a year ago. I couldn't imagine taking days upon days, weeks to dig through somebody's tweets from 10 years. And this is not like a nobody. Kevin Hart sends out millions of tweets. So imagine how long it took for them to find those specific tweets on Kevin Hart, right? So when you do things like that, when you try and dig up old tweets and you try to, you know, go out your way to, you know, bash somebody for every little. All right, deuces.